But Lynn was somebody who was full of life. She loved to travel on holidays. She loved to be sociable. To not be able to do those things, to not be able to live that life, was, was like death for Lynn. She was all but dead. Lynch's home was Dave's mother-in-law. He saw her live with Parkinson's disease and a serious spinal condition. In 2017, she decided to end her life by travelling to Dignitas in Switzerland due to being in chronic pain. She asked her family to help. It was not a, a rash decision in any sense, if you know what I mean. It was a, unfortunately, Lim, Lim was the person that arrived at that place where she needed to, to do what they, what they talked about. Today, a poll from the Royal College of GPs found that 47% of members want doctors to remain opposed to assisted dying. 40% hold the opposite view, whilst 11% want medics to adopt a neutral position. Having spent more than 25 years caring for patients requiring end-of-life care, Julian Neal thinks it's time for the law to be changed. One of Julian's patients killed himself with a shotgun on learning he was terminally ill. My mind had been changing due to increasing experience of looking after people with terminal illness. I realised there was no such thing as being able to guarantee a good death and that one case made me go from almost supporting to supporting. It was a tipping point. High profile campaigns have already attempted to change the law. Diane Pretty and Tony Nicholson both saw their bids fail in the courts before dying of their illnesses. But any plan to change the law is being keenly fought by a range of campaigners. I think if we do change the law in the future, then vulnerable people will feel pressure, whether that's real or, or perceived or imagined, to request assisted dying. The government have no plans to change legislation. For some families, the current law is a safeguard. For others, a restriction of choice. Warren Nettleford, Five News.